The Birmingham Children's March. The purpose of the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s was to bring about equal rights for black Americans and end segregation. Under segregation laws, blacks had separate schools, churches, public facilities, and seating sections in restaurants than whites. They also had to sit in the back of buses. The Birmingham Children's March of 1963 was a turning point in the civil rights movement, which helped end segregation. By the spring of 1963, support for the civil rights movement was declining. While black communities still wanted an end to segregation, adults in those communities were afraid of repercussions that might occur if they protested publicly. This was especially true of those who lived in Birmingham, Alabama, where police used intimidation and force against protesters. In April, Birmingham police jailed Dr. Martin Luther King for several days for protesting the unfair treatment of blacks. People worried that if they too got arrested for protesting, they'd lose income while in jail. Their employers might fire them. For working adults, there was too much to lose for them to actively join the movement. A man named James Bevel, a member, a member of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SCLC, an African-American civil rights organization, had an idea for jumpstarting the failing civil rights movement. Bevel proposed recruiting students to partake in the protests. He reasoned that children had less to lose than their parents. Initially, Dr. King was against involving youth in the protests. However, he realized that seeing young people stand up for civil rights might rally the rest of the nation in support of their cause. For that reason, he eventually agreed to Bevel's plan. Their recruitment efforts swept through the black high schools and colleges of Birmingham, Alabama, and other parts of the state. Through carefully guarded word of mouth, black students of all types were attracted to the movement, from those who worked the fields after school to football players, class presidents, prom queens, and cheerleaders. Civil rights groups trained the students in nonviolent techniques of protest May 2nd, 1963 was set as D-Day, the day more than 4,000 black students would ditch school and join the civil rights crusade against segregation. At precisely 11 a.m., the first group of 50 students got up and left their classroom. Minutes later, 50 more students joined them. Throughout the day, organized groups of 50 students continued to abandon their schools and join the march through downtown Birmingham. They marched near City Hall, hoping to talk with the mayor about ending segregation. Instead, they were arrested and thrown in jails. However, due to their strategy of using staggered groups of 50, as one group was escorted to jail in handcuffs, another group emerged to take their place. By the end of the day, almost 1,000 students had been jailed. The protests continued for several days, Every day, more students stood in for those who had been jailed. Inspired by the students' conviction, hundreds of adults joined the protest. With the jails filled, filled and not enough policemen to hold back the protesting crowds, police commissioner Eugene Bull Connor ordered his men to use violence to end the protest. Despite being blasted by fire hoses, attacked by police dogs, and beaten by policemen, the young protesters held firm. They did not back down. They did not meet violence with violence. They sang songs of hope and freedom. The Birmingham violence was broadcast across every news station in the U.S. Americans were outraged at the brutality of the attacks on the students. Birmingham authorities faced widespread criticism. Even President John F. Kennedy called on those in power in Birmingham to restore peace to the city under mounting pressure and public scrutiny. On the evening of May 7th, the officials of Birmingham agree, agreed to negotiate the black community leaders. The next day, King declared a temporary truce, suspending the protests. Finally, on May 10th, an agreement was reached. The city proposed a plan to slow, slowly implement desegregation efforts over the next 60 days. Signs that labeled public facilities like water fountains and restrooms for colored or whites would be taken down. They'd end discriminatory hiring practices, such as advertising, a position for whites only. Seating in restaurants would be integrated. 
They also agreed to release all the protesters from jail. The Birmingham Board of Education called for the suspension or expulsion of all students who participated in the march. However, their ruling was overturned in federal court. Despite their young age, the students of Birmingham accomplished something their parents could not. They stood together against segregation and won.